Hey everybody, there is not a single person among my subscribers who has not tried a bounty bar at least once in his life. Today, we will prepare a bounty bar of a simply incredible size. Let's see what the original bar consists of. Outside, we see milk chocolate, and inside, coconut filling. We go to the store for all the groceries we need. The first thing you need to take is a lot of chocolate. We have 150 chocolate bars in the cart. Coconut shavings. You need a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. 20 kilograms. 9 kilograms of sugar. Citric acid. Coconut oil. Basically, that's it. Now we can head to the checkout. check came out to $390. Let's start with the fact that we have a big sheet of wood. Using a ruler and a pencil, we draw everything. By hand, we round the corners. We have drawn the bounty form. Now we just need to cut it out with an electric jigsaw. Done. Now we take the plastic wrap and wrap it. We take three boxes of milk chocolates and a bowl. We crush the chocolate bars on the table, open them, and shake out the already broken pieces of chocolate into the bowl. We continue until the bowl is filled. Done. We put water in a saucepan and put that on the stove. Then the bowl of chocolate on top. Now we melt everything in a steam bath, stirring occasionally. Chocolate is porous, so when it melts, it greatly decreases in volume. We add more. We put the melted chocolate on a board. We put the mold on the table. And we pour in the chocolate in portions. And smear it around. All until we cover the entire surface of the mold. Now we take a huge saucepan and all the coconut shavings that we bought. We open each pack and pour it into the bowl. Done! There's almost 20 kilograms of coconut shavings in the saucepan. Now you need 4 kilograms of coconut oil. We open the jars and put them in there as well. Done. But now we need sugar and citric acid. We'll cook the syrup in two pots. We open a pack of sugar, measure 300 grams on the kitchen scale, and pour that into a pan. And in the second 300 grams, water is also needed. Measure 130 milliliters and pour it into the sugar. Now turn the stove on high and just wait until the syrup is cooked. Be sure to use a thermometer. 
As soon as the temperature has reached 107 degrees, we rearrange the pots, add a little citric acid, and mix. We take a three liter jar and pour our syrup into it. Between each new batch of syrup, we wash the pan from the previous batch. Again, we measure everything and cook. And keep repeating this. Only one jar is filled. This isn't enough. After another four hours, we cooked eight liters of syrup. Now we just need to pour the syrup into the saucepan and mix. But then I realized that there would be very little filling. So we bought another 50 kilograms of coconut shavings, 10 liters of coconut oil, and 20 liters of glucose syrup from the store. All this cost $315. By the way, playing with the syrup in the bag is a great stress reliever. It is the fucking best. Pour one jar of the syrup into a saucepan. We open the glucose syrup and fill the jar with it to understand how much we will add. Pour the first three liters. Then another one and a half. Now you need to mix all this with your hands so that all the coconut shavings are soaked with syrup and oil. The mass is heavy and thick, so it's hard to mix. But after 20 minutes, I mixed it all the way through. Our chocolate has been frozen for a long time. We take the coconut filling out and dump it into the mold. Evenly distribute the mass with your hands. And pack it in. We open the bag of coconut shavings, pour most of it into a saucepan. This time we make a small crater in the coconut shavings. And that's where we pour into our syrup. And then the glucose syrup. We open the canister with coconut oil and pour out four liters. This oil is liquidy because it was in hot water. Again, we knead it all together, this time with four hands. Then we pour out the contents of the pan. And spread it around. Now we just need to make the final third batch Put it into the mold as well. It will have to be leveled more carefully so that the shape of the bar looks like a bounty. At first we did it all with our hands and then we carefully patted it with a board. Done after two hours of hard work on the molding. We got what we needed. 
We take all the remaining chocolates, crush them on the table, open them up, and throw them back into the bowl. And into a steam bath. When all the chocolate has become liquid, pour it over the bar and smear it around with a spatula. Then pour out the second bowl of chocolate. Cover up all the gaps. And finally, the third bowl. I ran out of all the chocolate that I bought. I had to go to the store again and buy a lot more chocolate bars. This cost us $192. The chocolate that flowed down the sides of the bar, we collected from the bottom back into the bowl. We'll just melt it down again. That's how many chocolates we have to crush. To speed up the process, we use two bowls. Done. We send them to the steam bath. We wait until it melts, and we break more. And we're left with two full bowls of hot chocolate. But that's not all. We take the oil, and we add a lot of it to each bowl. Thanks to the oil, the chocolate will become more liquidy. We mix everything well, and pour it into the bar mold. Just look at how beautifully the chocolate fits. Pour out the second bowl of chocolate, and distribute it. Even more chocolate now. We tried to make little curlies on top, like on a bounty bar, but it didn't work out well enough to make them beautiful, so we poured the final bowl of chocolate on top to smooth out all the irregularities. After three days of work until two in the morning, our huge bounty bar is finally ready. After counting all the things that we used, it turned out that this mega monster weighs 134 kilograms. And there are 643,000 calories in this bar. That's a lot. Let's finally cut it. The chocolate layer is carefully cut with a hacksaw. And for the filling, I bought a hefty machete. We cut through the bar. The whole filling in the bar is uniform, as is in the original. Taking into account all additional purchases, our bounty bar costs $903. Let's cut off a small piece and try our huge bounty. Mm, you know, it doesn't taste like what it looks like. It just tastes like a bounty. Hello, everyone. Today, as I promised, we will prepare a giant donut weighing 120 kilograms. Let's go. We're going to the store. We bought six liters of butter, 40 kilograms of flour, forty kilograms of sugar, many packs of mastic, baking powder, starch, many different dyes, frozen strawberries. Eight kilograms of condensed milk. Two boxes of chicken eggs. We put all this under the cash register. And all these products cost $356. We begin to prepare the dough. We open up the boxes. We take out the trays with the eggs. 
And now we split our towers from the chicken eggs. We split our towers of the chicken eggs and put two plastic containers on the table. Now we divide each egg into the yolk and protein. Nothing complicated, but we have 630 of them. It took two hours to separate all of them. Done. We have completely filled the containers. And now we take three large basins. We scoop up the yolks with a measuring cup and pour the same amount into the basins. Now we need sugar. We open up the bags. Forty kilograms of sugar is scattered into each basin. Also pour in one liter of water. With the help of a construction mixer, we mix them. The mass should increase in volume and turn white. Now you need six liters of oil. Open it. And pour the same amount into each basin. What kind of dough would it be without flour? We open it. And we scatter 40 kilograms into the basins. For the splendor of the dough, we add baking powder. Open it and put half a kilogram in each basin. And once again, we mix thoroughly with a construction mixer. In the process, we also added water as the dough turned out to be very thick. Now we return to the chicken whites. We need four mixers and one standing mixer. We scoop up the whites with a measuring cup and sit exactly 300 milliliters into the bowl. And for the mixers, we measure twice as much, 150 each, and we fill them up. Turn it on. Right now, we have five servings of proteins whipped at the same time. We are waiting for them to turn into a foam. We send proteins from four small bowls into two basins. In the third basin, the bowl from the stain mixer. Gently using a spatula, we mix this foam into the dough to preserve as many air bubbles as possible. We made a small mini conveyor, and while one person measures and whips, the second, that is me, mixes them into the dough. And so for three hours. That's it, the dough is finally ready. And it's become much liquidier. The only way to make a large sized donut is to bake it in the custom maked mold. It looks like they're just a factory one. We open the oil into the can and sprinkle it from the inside. Now let's glue on some parchment to it. You need to cover the whole mold with it. And finally, we pour the dough from all three basins into the mold.
we will bake the dough in our huge oven. Now in total with the baking sheet, all this weighs 150 kilograms. We transfer it into the oven. And push it in. But that's not all. The mold needs to be raised and put a brake disc with a bearing under it. Now this structure can be rotated very easily. Ignite the burners and we close the oven. We need to maintain a temperature of 160 degrees. Every two hours, we will slightly open the doors, pull the rope, and turn the mold so that the dough is evenly baked. And while the donut is being baked, we will make a cream that will go inside. We open up the frozen strawberries, pour them into a large saucepan. We put it on the stove. And in half an hour, the strawberries should defrost and let the juice out. Add two kilograms of sugar. Mix that thoroughly with an immersion blender. Now we add the condensed milk. Cut through the film and squeeze the condensed milk into a saucepan. Now we open up two kilograms of starch. Also pour that into the saucepan. And knead until smooth. In order to break up the lumps really well, we use a whisk. And add some pink dye. We mix that up. After that, we pour this mass into strawberry. Mix it up, and it starts to thicken. We need a thick custard like this. Unwinding a special bag for the vacuum cleaner, we cut off about a meter, and we dissolve it along. We solder three such long packages together into one large one. Now it turns out a very large pastry bag. We cut off the tip of it. We push the iron tube through and fix it with plastic ties. Now we cut off all the excess. And we fill the bag with our berry cream. That's it, it's full. We return to the glaze. To do this, we cut in half a lot of lemons. With the help of such a special machine, we squeeze the juice out of all of them. The machine squeezes the juice right to the maximum, much more convenient and faster than with your hands. Done. It turned out to be a whole bowl of sour lemon juice. Now let's paint it pink. The second thing you need to do for the glaze is powdered sugar. Lots of powdered sugar. We open it and send it all to a large basin. Then pour in parts of the tinted lemon juice. Mix it up. Now we'll get the consistency of a very thick glaze. For the last preparatory stage, we open up the mastic. Now this is quite dense. Therefore, we send it into the microwave. When heated, it is much softer. In four briquettes of mastic, we add the different dyes. Mix all that well with your hands until all the dyes go in. Done. 
we shifted it into a square shape. We pressed the master with our hands. We repeat the same thing with each color. Then we just cut it into slices. We get this kind of increased sprinkling. We got all the colors like this. The donut is already cooked. We take it out of the oven and bring it into the studio. To turn it all in, we install a special cover. We snap it on. Turn it over. and unsnap the fasteners. Now we lift up the mold, and we tear off all the unnecessary parchment. Now it can be moved to the table. The shape turned out to be a little bit wrong, but in general it looks like a donut. We push in the cooking bag, and we push out more cream. Now for the glaze. Just pour it all over the top of the donut. And now the last thing, we spread out the multicolored sprinkles. Done. As I promised, we cooked a very huge donut weighing as much as 120 kilograms, and it took three whole days to prepare it. I think it's worthy of your like and for you to subscribe to the channel. Let's cut it open and see what's inside. There's just so much cream. Let's try a piece.